Okay, so this is the advanced SSRS reporting section. All right, as you can tell, we're in the Visual Studio Shell from 2008. Um, I'm inside a new project. By going to New Project, I selected Report Server Project. Okay, it generated this specifically for me. First thing I'm going to do here is add new data source. This is a shared data source that every other one of the reports in my project is going to share. Okay, and I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to take the server name, and I'm going to add in my database. Um, we're going to go through creating parameters, advanced parameters, which is um, it's a very good, uh, useful thing to have. We're going to go through some uh, some advanced uh, integrated searching um, that that can be uh, developed within your reports. Okay, and then we're going to go through a little bit more from there. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up um, our new report. Okay, as you can see here, I've added my new report just by going to reports. This will generate through the wizard. This will generate manually. I went in through here and I added a new report. You can also choose add a data set uh, here, report wizard, data source as well. Okay, and as well, you need to add in a data set. Now, in newer versions of SSRS, they allow to have shared data sets, I believe. So what I've added up here has then been viewed uh, Via our normal standard side panel here within the reporting data tab. Okay, so if you're in here and you're looking around for reporting data, this is where the bread and butter is of all your stuff. And we all know how to drag in simple fields here. So let's drag in our three fields. And then as well, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but it always looks nice if you're doing a report for some sort of company to drag in an image, say, for that company. All right. Now you're prompted at this point to then import the image so you want to go to desktop or wherever wherever you stored the image or if you just grabbed it off of their website you can include those in the report and they look pretty cool um, of course you have sub reports and charts and things like that and I believe map and data bar and sparkline and indicator are relatively new um, I don't know how new but they're not on my network so they're probably relatively new um, so let's go ahead and close out of this Go back to our reporting data, okay? And let's add a parameter, okay? So we add a parameter, reporting parameter, and let's put it on, let's see, account, account key, okay? And the prompt, this is what you're gonna be, this is the, the, the label that's gonna go on the left-hand side before the parameter. So let's do account key. That seems well enough understood. Okay. Now, if you don't establish um, a default, it's going to now request. When I'm done with this, it's going to request a blank, a blank text box for me to search and type in the account key. It's not smart searching, but if you type in the account key, it'll work. Okay. Skipping ahead. All right, so I've just made my first uh, report parameter. Um, this is just a blank parameter, so I can type in one or two or three, and just by hitting return, I can turn in my different parameters. Okay, and the way I designed that, by going back into my design screen, is I first added the parameter up here. Okay, by choosing it, and let's scroll, just right-click this one, and go right into the properties. So I changed this to database log ID. This one has to match this one. That's basically the premise. Okay. Now, if you want to add a drop-down box, all you need to do is add in specific values. So you choose the available values for the parameter, and the individuals will then be forced to select choices from those those values. Okay. You can also choose default values. So if you want your report to auto-load, you're going to choose your default values to be the same as your available values. Um, let's see some other interesting stuff here. Um, going on to the uh, the new and improved uh, toolbox, um, I just wanted to note one more thing. Subreports are, are, are a facet you're probably going to be using a lot of going forward, but one of the more common ones are matrices. Okay, so matrices um, are going to do counts and they'll do they'll pull out pullouts by like region or something like that or line of business. So you do generally select two and then you have a count in the middle okay so most people get stuck on the count part so we're gonna do this by event and then we're gonna do by post time but we're gonna right click this and we're gonna do equals count post time okay 
and you'll get very used to using the expression builder here. It's pretty intuitive. Everything is based off of fields exclamation point, the name of your column, dot value. Um, 90% of the stuff you're going to be doing. You're probably going to be doing averages, stand devs, plus, division, minus. It's all very easily usable within, um, within this. Okay, so let's try this. All right, so now we have uh, our matrix, and it did a count. So the only count of this returned one value. Okay, this may, may, not, may, may not be the best one, so I'm going to go ahead and create a little bit more of an advanced, more complex version of this. Before I jump back into uh, describing how to do matrices, I just want to quickly show interactive searching, or whatever they call it in here. It's actually really cool. Yeah, it's called interactive searching. Um, it's amazing. Um, and you can choose sort by product key or product alternate key. So in this case, we're going to choose sort by product alternate key. And you can do this for every single column. We're only going to do it for one column for this report. And as you can see here, I mean, well, actually, that should have been placed up here interactive sorting, sort by product alternate key, and then we're going to remove the interactive sorting from here. Let's preview that again. Okay, so here you can actually sort this. This is an interactive sort that can work for every single one of your columns which you choose. Now back to the matrix. I've taken two larger fields and used them in creating a slightly more complicated matrix. Um, I used two very similar types of fields in two separate matrices so that you can see the difference between the two. Okay, um, So this is my first matrix and I have a sum built in here. So if you right click on this and go to the expression you'll see sum which is the next most common um, expression command within the expression dialog in SSRS. Okay, So this is going to uh, calculate the sum of every one of these classes and it's going to go all the way down and this is going to calculate a subtotal of uh, these classes. So if I wanted to add in uh, a subtotal within this sum column, so the sum of sums essentially, um, I would add an inside group below. Actually, no, it would be an outside group below. And I would type in, by right clicking here, my expression, which is equals sum whoops, equals sum 1. Okay, And if I want to have this also sum equals sum 1. Or I could do equals sum 1 plus 1. And that will add an additional 1 onto the end of that sum for everything. I'm going to go into preview mode. And let's scroll down. Uh, we're going to actually have to go to the end of this so you can navigate to the end, right? And that's when you will see these totals. This is calculating every single one of these and adding them up together. And this is adding every single one of these and adding them up together along with 1 plus 1, or the sum plus 1, rather. Um, that's a short look on SSRS Advanced Services. Um, it's a great platform. It's much superior to Crystal Reports. It's free. It's very easy to integrate as it comes in the box associated with SQL Server um, standard or, or express edition. Um, if you have any questions related to this, feel free to um, send me a question and I'll send you a response. Thanks.